Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. I hope everyone had a great holiday if you celebrate and a happy new year. Now, I pray 2023 brings you all love, peace, and happiness, and I have truly missed you all so much. Now, today's chat is going to be a tad bit different. Now, it's actually going to be the first of many within our first series. Now, since I kept you all waiting so long, I had to make it worth the wait. Now, I'll still be dropping my regular content, you know, in between because I love you all so much. Um, But we're going to begin our series from the start of it all. Most of what we have discussed thus far is the aftermath. So let's jump on back to the beginning. You know, before the Civil War, before the Reconstruction period, let's jump back to slavery. Now, we're going to start with the meaning and the origin of slavery. We're going to take a journey through the Underground Railroad. We're going to battle through the Civil War and possibly stop at the Reconstruction period. I mean, cat style, of course. Now, who knows? You know, maybe we'll even go a little further. I guess we'll you know, just have to see as we move on along. And so, with that being said, let's chat. Before we talk about slavery, we must understand what the word actually means. Now, if one takes a good look back into history, historically, there have been many different types of slavery. Now, the different types of slavery include, to begin, forced labor. Now, forced labor slavery is when a person is compelled or forced against their will to provide work or service through the use of force, fraud, or coercion. Now, next we have chattel slavery. Now, chattel slavery is the one most, you know, common and familiar And the one that we may know more than any other type of slavery. Now, this form of slavery is more related to American slavery. Chattel slavery is the system that allowed people to be considered legal property, bought, sold, and owned forever. Chattel slavery was perfectly legal and supported by the European and United States powers during the 16th and 18th centuries. Now, we're going to discuss this more in depth a little bit later in the series. Now, next up, we have bonded slavery or debt slavery. Now, bonded slavery or debt slavery is when one gives themselves over into slavery to pay off a debt or a loan of their own or a relative. And last but not least, we have sexual slavery. Now, sexual slavery is defined as the state of being unlawfully kept in a situation where one is repeatedly forced to engage in sexual activity against their will. Now, now that we know the different types of slavery or the definitions, rather, let's discuss when it all really started. Now, there are a number of things that contributed to the development of slavery. Now, some reasons include economic necessity in cities where larger workforces were needed, war, and dominations or status. I mean, the more slaves you own, the more influential and the wealthier you were. Now, some don't know that slavery did not start in America. I mean, in fact, slavery started long before America was even thought about. I mean, slavery dates all the way back to around 6,800 or 6,000 B.C., which equates to about 6,800 or 6,000 years before Christ, according to the reports. Mesopotamia is said to be the world's first city or state And the first humans are said to have settled there by 14,000 B.C. in the Paleolithic era. 
Now, the first instance of slavery is said to have occurred in Mesopotamia around 6800 or 6000 BC, as I said earlier. Now, the numbers differ, but the history doesn't. Now, in Mesopotamia, when enemies were captured during war, they were forced to work or forced into labor. Remember, we talked about that earlier. Now, slavery existed in Mesopotamia for thousands of years. The Sumerians, Babylonians, and Assyrians all had slaves. Now, enslavement for debt was perfectly legal in the Babylonian period. Now, the slaves that were captured at war, they were branded, bought, and sold at markets. And they worked in the temples, palaces, and outside in irrigation and construction projects. Now, the people of Mesopotamia, they were said to have been the first people with slaves. But they weren't the only people with slaves. Now, around 2575 BC, Egyptians were said to have captured slaves in battle through special expeditions up the Nile River. Now, let's take a little trip through Egypt, shall we? Now, when many think of Egypt, the pyramids and the extraordinary architecture comes to mind. And many people believe the pyramids were built by slaves. Now, some think they were built by aliens, but that's another video. But it was believed for numerous years that thousands of oppressed slaves worked themselves to death to construct the pyramids. Now, later, the story changed to peasants being forced to build the pyramids when working on other agricultural work outside of the field working season. Now, more recently, it has been said that none of these past theories are true. And the pyramids and other monumental structures were actually built by highly qualified workers. Now, these highly qualified workers who they were said to have devoted their entire lives to constructing the pyramids and other structures. I mean, the world probably will never know the truth and the people who can tell the true story, they are long gone. Now, the ancient Egyptians, they were said to have three different types of slaves. Now, the first type were slaves who were prisoners of war. And this was pretty common in a lot of areas. And the second type were slaves who sold themselves their children or both into slavery to settle debts. Now, the third type were slaves who were owned by the state, but they received wages. Now, Egyptian slaves were said to be marked or branded like cattle to show their status in ancient society was as low as cattle. And branding irons, they have even been said to have been discovered. Now, the irons that were said to have been discovered, they were too small for cattle, so the collection is believed to have been for humans. The collection includes 10 irons that date back roughly to around 1292 to 656 BC. Now, the Egyptians, they were even said to have a house of female slaves. And this house of female slaves were slaves that solely produced or gave birth to other slaves. And the relationship between the Egyptians and their slaves were set into Egyptian law. There were, however, some restrictions when it came to children. Now, slave owners, they were not allowed to force child slaves to do extremely harsh physical labor. Now, in Egypt, slaves were not bought and sold in markets like other areas at this time. Now, any transaction which involves selling or buying slaves was overseen by the government officials. And the oldest written reference of slavery is in the Hammurabi Code of 1754 BCE. Now, BCE means before common era.
Now, the reference to slavery within this code, it states that if anyone takes a male or female slave of the court or a male or female slave of a freed man outside the city gates, he shall be put to death. Egyptian slavery is also accredited for the famous biblical tale of the Exodus where the Israelites were led to freedom by Moses. And this is also the earliest known written record of slaves attaining freedom. Now, next up is slavery in ancient Greece. And according to the reports, around 550 BC, Athens had the largest population of slaves, which is ironic because the Greeks, they fought pretty hard against Persian enslavement. I mean, the Athenians, they invented a government based on the equality of men, yet they enslaved their fellow man. Now, slavery was so common in Greece, even some poor homes had slaves. I mean, the rich, they had hundreds of slaves. And some poor homes, they had at least one slave, even if they had to kidnap them. Now, the people of Greece, they practiced chattel slavery and bonded or debt slavery. Now, we talked about these types of slavery earlier in the video. And as Greece declined and Rome expanded, about 30% of the population were slaves. And many of that 30% were conquered people. Now, before we move past the Greeks and the Romans, we must discuss the slaves that were used for sport. And these slaves are the gladiators and the brothel or the whorehouse slaves. Now, many gladiators were, you know, they were slaves that were trained to fight in special schools. I mean, according to the reports, of course. Now, the gladiators, they were trained to fight barehanded with nets, with forks, daggers and even swords. Now, the gladiators, they had to fight criminals and other slaves armed or unarmed. Now, some reports state the gladiators opponents were only armed with a net and all fights were to the death. So the fights only ended when one man died. Now, it is believed that the first gladiators, they were actually slaves used for entertainment at a funeral. Now, during the funeral of Junus Brutus Pera, a slave battle was arranged by the deceased man's relatives to honor his death. Now, the slave battle, it became a tradition and was copied at many other funerals that followed. And it really didn't take long before the slave-on-slave -slave combat spectacle became a staged event and entertainment within many arenas. And of course, a fee was charged for the spectators to watch the now gladiators battle it out to the death. And if a man became wounded and was unable to continue fighting, during one of the battles, of course, he would make a sign for mercy. And once the wounded man made a sign for mercy, the crowd got to decide whether he lived or died. And the crowd, they would make their decision with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Now, a thumbs up, that meant the loser, he should lose his life. And a thumbs down meant the loser should be spared. I mean, the largest gladiator fights were held in Colosseum in Rome. I mean, the huge circular amphitheater was said to seat up to 50,000 people. Now, as far as the brothel or the whorehouse slaves, I mean, the name kind of speaks for itself. And we all know prostitution is one of the oldest professions known to man. And the houses or the brothels, they included willing participants, 
and unwilling participants or slaves. Now let's move on down on the history train to the British slave era or the first slaves in England. Now, according to the reports, the first recorded Englishman to have taken you know, people from Africa and enslaved them was John Locke. According to the reports, in 1555, Locke brought back five enslaved people from Guinea to England. Now, not long after, it is said that a London trader named William Tower- William Towerson captured Africans to be enslaved during his voyages from Plymouth to Africa between the years of 1556 and 1557. Now, for unknown reasons, Locke and Towerson's role in British slavery, they're pretty much overlooked, and John Hawkins is the one who is acknowledged. Now, Hawkins is acknowledged as the pioneer of English slave trade. Beginning in 1562, Hawkins made three voyages to Sierra Leone. He transported 1,200 soon-to-be slaves to Espanol and St. Dominique or present-day Haiti and Dominican Republic. Now, Hawkins' voyages are said to be the beginning of the triangular slave trade between England, Africa, the Caribbean, and the Americas. Now, before we go further into the slave trade, let's talk about what Africa was like before slavery. The people of West Africa were rich in culture before the Europeans arrived, and their land was full of many riches. The African society was already practicing a wide variety of political arrangements as well. Now, Africans, they had kingdoms, cities or states, and several other organizations all with their own language and culture. The kingdoms of Mali, Benin, Congo, and the Empire of Songhai were all large and powerful and had monarchs leading the complex political structures governing hundreds of thousands of subjects. The Africans were very intelligent people and they were very knowledgeable They had skills and their technology was far more advanced than most of the world at this time. Now, some reports state that some African knowledge and technology was far more advanced than all of the world at this time. I mean, the Africans, they were specially skilled in medicine, mathematics and astronomy and art, learning and technology. They flourished in Africa. Africa flourished in domestic goods as well. Now, Africans, they made fine luxury items from ivory, bronze, terracotta, and gold for local use and for trade. Now, West Africans, they traded goods with Europeans through merchants in North Africa for hundreds of years. Although... The Portuguese were the first traders to sail down the West African coast during the 15th century. Now, the French, the Dutch, and the British, they were later to follow the Portuguese and sail down the West African coast as well. Now, in the beginning, the Portuguese, the French, the British, and the Dutch, they all were mainly interested in precious items like spices, I mean, pepper in particular, ivory, and gold. They weren't particularly interested in people or slaves, per se, at this time. Now, the Europeans, on the other hand, they had other motives from the very beginning. Now, from the very first contact with the Africans, the European traders kidnapped and bought Africans to take back and sell in Europe. And yes, I did say bought. I mean, not all slaves were taken or kidnapped from Africa. 
Some Africans were captured by the Europeans during the raids along the coast. But most of the slaves the Europeans obtained in the beginning, they were bought from local African or African-European dealers. Now, the slave dealers, they were said to have a very sophisticated network of trading alliances for collecting groups of people and selling them like property. Now, the Africans, the slave merchants collected, they were mainly captures of battle. But some were people who had been kidnapped and some had been sold into slavery to pay off debts or they were sold as punishment. Now, in the beginning, the Europeans, they would only buy or kidnap a few slaves to take back with them. But they began to get greedier and less humane as the years passed. Now, it was around the 17th century when plantation owners wanted more and more slaves to satisfy the increasing sugar and labor demands in Europe. And this demand... The inhumanity and greed, it all contributed to the transatlantic slave trade, which was the most dominant slave trade in history. I mean, the Europeans, they were no longer taking a few slaves back here and there on their own ships. But instead, the captives are the massive numbers of slaves. They were marched to the coast. Sometimes the march took weeks or months. It depended on you know where the slaves were being marched from. The slaves were shackled together during the march. And once they made it to the coast, they were imprisoned in small wooden compounds or large stone forts that were built by European trading companies. The slaves would stay in these compounds or forts until the European slave ships arrived. Now, when the European slave ships arrived, they were full of gold and goods and just everything to trade for the Africans. And what happened next is still hard to believe to this very day. What happened next was American slavery. One of the most horrific and inhumane accounts of slavery ever in history. Well, I think this is a good stopping point for today. And I promise you all part two is coming very soon. But tell me what you all think about our new series in the comments below please like the video please share the video please subscribe if you haven't already and until next time peace love and blessings